The following clip is from TrainSignal's SQL Server 2008 administration course, featuring over 10 hours of in-depth training on how to install, set up, and optimize SQL Server 2008. So jumping in, there's your three recovery models. Full recovery, bulk logged recovery, and simple recovery model. But before we even get into what the recovery models are, Let's talk a little more generically. What is a recovery model? In SQL Server, your recovery model simply determines what's available to be backed up. What are you saving? And we'll talk about that in more detail, but for now, with the full recovery model, which is your primary method of backing up SQL Server, everything's available. Your log files are complete. It allows you to do the most precise backup. So let's say, for example, the system crashes at 7.01 p.m. on a particular day. You can restore the system back to 7, uh, a minute before, back to 7 p.m. exactly. And then whatever happened right after that is gone. So you have that kind of control. With bulk logs, you get a little better performance, but you don't have the ability to restore back to a specific moment in time. And then with simple recovery, as you might have guessed, it's very simple. You either can, you can recover to a certain point, and that's it. The whole concept of being able to roll back to a particular instance in time is completely gone. But we'll get into those in a lot more detail coming up. Got a lot more information that'll help differentiate those three. But for now, I just want to simply show you uh, how do you set that, how do you change that. But here, let's jump over to our server now. So here I am on my server, my SQL Server box, one of them actually. And I'm going to go to Start, bring up SQL Server Management Studio, log into the local server, click Connect. I'm running as administrator still for now. And going to my databases folder, if I expand that, there's my Veronica's database. Now, if you don't have that in place, you can easily recreate that. Once again, just go to the File menu, go Open, Open File and go out to the course files folder and the subfolder for this video and there's a script you can run to recreate Veronica's the Veronica's database but if I right click on it and go to properties and I can see that hey I've been doing my job the thing actually got backed up relatively recently both the database and then 12 minutes later the log file if I go to options I can see my recovery model. Now collation is not at all involved with recovery model and compatibility level can play into it but that's not really involved with recovery or backups either. So we don't really need to focus there for now but if you hit this drop down there's your full, your bulk logged and your simple recovery models. I can change those from here in a production database but before you do that there are some things to know about changing recovery models in a production database. It's not something to be taken lightly. You want to avoid it as much as possible. Plan that out up front. Now, as far as planning it out up front goes, see, I'll right click on my databases folder. I'll leave that up for now. And if I go new database, go to options, and we can bring, and we can bring both those up at the same time if we maneuver them just right. And it's really the same interface, just a few less options. So in my new database, here's where I can pick that right up front before I even name the database. So typically, that's when you want to have that set. You want to try and set that up front. There are a few occasions where you might need to change it in production, but for the most part, you want to leave that static as much as possible. So with that, let's talk a little bit more in detail about these recovery models. So let's move back over to the slides. So let's get into a little more detail on the recovery models, starting with the full recovery model. Transactional logs, they're all saved. Because once again, that's really the big difference between the different recovery models. This really has nothing to do with what's actually backed up yet. It's only what's available for backing up. Transaction logs are all there, so you can and should back those up. And no work is lost. So, you know, in a perfect world, maybe it's not so perfect because you do have a loss here, but you're able to retrieve um, data that's been possibly lost due to a corrupted file or uh, go back to a corrected version of the database after someone has inadvertently made a mistake um, and made a change they should not have made. Uh, you can do it to any arbitrary point in time, potentially. 
Now, this is the data that's provided by the full recovery model. When we get into the actual backup types, there's some things you want to consider there as well. But you do have what you need to recover to, you know, 7.01 p.m. when something went wrong at 7.02 p.m. Normally, once again, no work loss exposure. And I have normally there in italics because, once again, there's, there's things that can go wrong with even a backup. And one of those is right there, I put in parentheses. If the tail of the log is damaged, what do, what do I mean by that? Let's say you have multiple log backups. If that last log backup is damaged, then any changes that are made since your most recent prior backup will be lost. So we're going to we'll look at that, right? But you're going to have not necessarily one backup file, but you may have a backup file within other backups that need to be applied on top of that to get you current. But let's say one of those, maybe the last one in the list, is also corrupted, then you've got a problem. So when do you use the full recovery model, right? That's what I really want to know. When do I do it? First of all, you must, anytime you must be able to recover all of your data, this is the only model that will give you that. Secondly, if the database contains multiple file groups, you may recall when we did our install, we talked about creating file groups to save our database in or on you can divide up your backups based upon different criteria. You can divide, slice and dice according to file groups. You can slice and dice according to tables. You can slice and dice according to rows in tables. So it's up to you how you design this. And if you want to be able to do this kind of a piecemeal recovery in case of a loss, you need to be using the full recovery model. Third, you want to be able to recover to a point in time, like I said before. Fourth, you're willing to incur some cost. You know, the downside of a full recovery model is you've got tons of information now that you may or may not ever need that you're backing up. Every single transaction individually is logged and needs to be backed up. So you've got greatly accelerated log file growth. There's also a performance hit there on the last one there, number five because you are actually taking the time to record every transaction, every database transaction a second time because it's also being written to your log file. All right? So we talked about full recovery. Let's talk about the bulk logged recovery model a little bit. Bulk logged recovery is an adjunct, to use a Microsoft term actually, to the full recovery model. Logs are still maintained, but you just don't get every transaction. So there's some benefits and downsides to that. One of the benefits is if you have high performance bulk copy operations, you're not recording every single transaction that's part of that bulk copy. The, the log will only show that a bulk transaction occurred. Now, of course, there's also a disk space. You don't have each, each transaction recorded. But the downside is you don't have the ability to go back to a specific point in time during that bulk copy. You get all of it or nothing. There's nothing in between. So as it says here, if the log is damaged or bulk log operations occur after the most recent log backup, changes since that last backup have to be redone. So let's talk about that and what we lose and what we don't lose. So let's say this is time progressing and we are you know, doing transactions in our database and at some point in time we do a full backup. And hopefully at some point later, not too much later, hopefully like right afterwards, we do a log backup. So things are great. And then we do some bulk load operation, right? So we're doing full recovery model. We're doing backups of the, of the system. We're doing log backups of the system. And then we do some bulk load operation. So things are still cool until disaster strikes, right? Something happens and at some point in time, there's some corruption that happens in our database or changes made that just wreaks havoc in our environment, how much information do we lose? Well, we lose everything all the way back to that log backup. Because of the bulk load operation, we lose everything back to the log backup. Hmm. So how do I fix that problem? The recommendation, always back up your log just before you do any bulk operation. Back up your log right after you do any bulk operation. And then the result is your losses are only as far as as far back as your last log backup. So bulk load operations can save you time. Processing runs better, but you have to be a little bit more deliberate now in protecting the information. You can't just rely on your other backup. You need to do additional backups right around that bulk load operation. Okay?